Hello everyone, XP Games and L here, and welcome back to another Fire Emblem Builder tutorial. Today we're not doing something I usually do. Normally I take up a certain topic or a certain request, but this time around we're actually taking up some loose bits, actually some really helpful tools in Fire Emblem Builder that you might have never seen before or that no one has ever really covered, simply because they're so minor and obscure. Um, today we'll be covering a lot of different stuff in this video at once. This will be the uh, the gold mine video as I'm going to dub it. Um, no one particularly requested this, but I will go over everything, uh, over a couple of small things in the ROM. Uh, so that you kind of know where some of the very specific stuff in FE Builder is so that you can edit it for yourself. I will leave some timestamps in the uh, comments below as well as in the description so that it becomes slightly easier for you guys to find out the main points of interest in this particular video. Um, and since this is not per se going to yield an end result, uh, I will not show some footage of how it's going to turn out right now. Uh, instead, I'll cover every single editor one by one and uh, yeah. It will be a short compilation video about various things. So the first thing is the affinity support boosts. It's a little button right here when you have all of these things enabled and nothing in the search bar. Click on this little window and what will pop up is this little window right here. Let me make it a little bit bigger. As you can see, we have all of the affinities right here. And as you know, in Fire Emblem Game Boy Advance, affinities will give a certain amount of extra well, support boosts. As you can see, the fire affinity gives one extra power, so one extra attack effectively, five extra avoid, five extra critical, and five extra hit. So when you pair up or when you have a support with a character that has a fire affinity, these will be the bonuses that you will receive at level one. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, but these stats will increase once your support level increases with the character as well. Whether this um, is a thing or not, let me know in the comments. But basically, what you can do is edit these little values that you get as extra support boosts. So let's say you're like, oh shit, the fire affinity is a little bit too powerful. Then you simply say, well, I'll remove the five critical and set it to zero. The same thing can be done as well the other way around. Let's say the anima affinity does not give a lot of good extra stat boosts and you're like, well, this kind of sucks. I want to buff this a little bit. You can say, for an example, the anima will, uh, affinity will now grant two defense on every single support. So this is a little teeny tiny tool that allows you to edit some of the support boosts you might want to incorporate or some in support nerfs or buffs uh, with um, when it comes to affinity in Fire Emblem Builder. Let's just say you're playing your average standard Fire Emblem game and you just inserted the new portrait inside your Fire Emblem ROM. As you can see right here, I added Anna from Fire Emblem The Prophecy of Flames into this very ROM. But as you see, the portrait is all the way at the bottom of the screen and you're a little bit bugged out by that. First of all, close the ROM and go to your advanced editor screen. Once at the advanced editor screen, click on the button that says portrait height right here. If you click it, the following window will appear. This window right here allows you to see every single portrait in Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones that is being used and is not a generic portrait. Uh, there are some portraits missing here. So if you want to change this, simply click on the button that says data expansion. The game will then load all of the portraits in the entire ROM into this section right here. So yeah, and if you decide to add more portraits in the portrait editor at a certain point, just click on data expansion again and add some new slots. The character we're looking for is Vanessa, who has Anna's portrait. Now simply click on this button that says raise and what will happen is once we go to the status screen of the character, the portrait will be raised a little bit in the frame. Now we can also do this for, let's say, Rip Seth for an example, where we raise his portrait. And you will see what happens when we raise a portrait that is actually already tall enough to fit inside the box itself. Let's boot up the ROM.
and let's continue. Now, as we can see, Anna's portrait has been raised and now has a decent spot and is of a decent size inside the mug box. So if you uh, feel like your character is not really correctly in that box over here, then simply go to the portrait height to fix this. But be careful though, if a character already has enough or has taken up a decent size in the box already and you will raise his portrait nonetheless, the character will fit outside of the box and will be lifted outside and you'll basically miss a part of their hair. Which, that looks like this when you do it with Rip Seth, but there's a lot of other characters where you might not really expect it. For an example, this re Elliewood recolor of mine, you can raise his portrait as well, and even then he falls outside of the mug box. So, try to fundle around with this a little bit and see if it works for your characters. Now this little button right here, the cloak button, is very, very, very precise and is something you will most likely never ever use. Unless, well, you decide to use it nonetheless. This little button right here, it, and when you hover over it, it, it explains what it does. What happens is simply when you use a battle animation where a character has a cloak, what will happen is once they cast their spell, what the cloak will do is it will keep, well, moving during the entire duration of the spell. Meaning that if I cast a Vimblevetter, what will happen is my cloak will keep moving until the Vimblevetter is over and I return to my idle state. If you want this little movement during the rest of the animation, you simply click on this button and it will bring you to the following screen. This right here is the screen that we're looking for. This is the cloak menu screen and simply what it does is fairly simple. It has all these classes that basically use some sort of cloak and as you can see not every single class literally has this sort of here. Not every single class here uses a cloak per se. As you can see there's the journeyman class for an example. But there's also the um, the Valkyrie classes and other classes, but mostly mages. If you want to add an animation or a class here that will use the, well, moving cloak during an animation, simply click on data expansion and do s and basically use the C47 command inside the animation, uh, inside the animation editor. And what will happen is during the animation, once you cast a spell or do something really interesting or cool and the character is idle, the cloak will move without the character moving itself. So it's a little tiny detail that you might not even have noticed inside standard Fire Emblem Game Boy Advance, but it is there. If you wanted to add it to your own ROM, well, now you can. Next up is something I talked about in my debug and errors video, which we'll probably link in the description as well as I hope I do not forget to put this in the video, but it should be somewhere up near the little I button up in top right now. It should appear on screen. Anyway, the lint is also known as Effie lint in the ROM, and what it does is basically, as this little pop-up says, automatically detect errors inside the ROM. Now, to show you, simply when I just run this thing, let me get it on screen real quick. As you can see, it starts scanning every single bit of the ROM, but what you will also see is that it will not have detected any errors. I highly recommend to, around every single time you put out a new patch or make a major update, to run this FE lint simply because it will detect hidden bugs for you. So, things you might have not found out or looked over during your development process, you can simply find out if it's still a thing or if it's a hidden bug by simply clicking this button. Now, every time I reload, there will, of course, no, no new errors will pop up simply because I have made no errors every time I reload. But you can also show hidden errors by ticking this box and then it will even look even harder for some more hidden errors. And even then, this tutorial ROM does not contain any errors that Effie Builder can find. Now, do note that this is errors that Effie Builder can catch itself. Though that is quite a lot, there are a couple of bugs and errors that Effie Builder cannot find itself. And that can actually only be discovered by playtesting. So do not see this as an opportunity for you to be lazy. Just keep playtesting your ROM. It's the only good advice I can give. A thing that 
is really interesting and I haven't covered is this little button right here, the terrain editor. Click on this button and the following screen will pop up. This screen is the terrain editor. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see it more clearly. Right here we have the terrain editor and it contains every single class inside the ROM. So it goes from, of course, from Lord all the way down to even the trainee classes that are sometimes unused, the super trainees for the most part. Every single class right here in this table has certain movement costs. As you can see, a 1 stands for costing 1 movement every single time you want to pass through. Every single two, 255 basically means that it's impassable terrain and that characters cannot pass over it or pass onto it. As you can see right here, 255 is a tile that cannot be moved. And uh, this little text right here, this little description explains a lot of what happens right here. But basically what you can set here is all of the movement costs on the map. So for an example, for a Lord, Erica Lord or Ephraim Lord, a fort will cost two movement points. But as you can see right here, for a Cavalier, well it is the same. But as you can see, a Cavalier takes three extra movement to get through a forest, while a Lord only takes two. Meaning that passing through a forest or over a forest is a lot easier for a Lord class than it is for a Cavalier class. And for a Desert, it's even more interesting because normal foot soldiers like these guys right here, because they share all of the same values, they can cross desert terrain, river terrain, and mountain terrain as easily. All these classes evenly can pass through that terrain, but a cavalier can not really do that. Also, notice how a lord, the, both of the lord characters, take five movement to pass over a river. It's really interesting because the base move of the lord classes is five, so it would basically make it impassable terrain for these lords unless they use the boots which I find quite interesting. But when we compare normal foot soldiers or even cavaliers and sometimes even armor knights to let's say a flying unit, a flying unit has a lot of ones because well they can fly over any terrain really without having a lot of without having any handicaps. The only problem is is that they cannot fly over valleys, snags, masts, braces and closed villages walls, damaged walls, uh, roofs, and doors, but for the rest they can pass over every single terrain in the ROM. And when comparing this to, for an example, the Ranger right here, there's a big difference in what they can and cannot pass through. Also interesting to note that they only take two movements to get through a forest, and only three to get through a desert, while a Cavalier has a much bigger handicap with a forest and a desert. What is also really interesting is that you can not only edit it right here for clear sky, aka no weather, but you can also set it for rain, snow, and you can even edit the avoid that certain terrain gives you right here. So for an example, a lake will give 10 avoidance to a cavalier, and a rubble will give 5 avoidance to a cavalier. And most of these values are shared between all of the classes except for flying classes. Flying classes like Wyvern Riders do not get any defensive bonuses. So, just so you're aware of that, just so you know. You can add it extra terrain as well. Let's say you want a forest to give 30 avoid instead of 20. Well, here you go. Here's where you can edit that. Also, what you can edit here as well is the amount of defense a terrain will give. So, a forest will give one extra defense to a Lord class two extra defense when you're on a fort and three when you're on a gate and that's just basically everything uh, in terms of defense the same goes for resistance because fortresses gate and gates and apparently even churches and gates they also give extra resistance or extra healing but they also give extra resistance a throne gives five extra resistance to any class that is a foot soldier that stands on it. Which actually means that 
If you're a lord on a throne, you have a hidden 5 extra resistance bo bonus. So keep this in mind. You could set this to 0, so a character will not get any resistance boost when they're on a throne. But just so you know, there is a hidden resistance bonus that you can also edit for, let's say, a fort for an example. And then there's also healing, so you can heal once you're on a fort. This is the percentage of HP that will be healed once you're on a certain part of terrain. And finally, there's also recovery, recovery bad status. This means that if you're on a heal tile, on a gate, or on a throne, if you're berserked, asleep, poisoned, etc., a status effect will be cured if you're on one of these tiles for an entire turn. And this one is just random information. This is just says it's impossible or not, or, well, it's just information display. Still, if you wanted to edit some values, with a correlation to avoidance, defense, uh, movement costs in clear sky, rain, snow, uh, and all kinds of other things that have to do with terrain, their bonuses and their bonus stats, this is the table you need to go to to find all of that information and change it, of course, if you want to. The next little tool is the Arena Enemy Editor. Basically what this does is it allows you to add new classes into the pool of classes that will appear in the arena. This means that if you created a custom class yourself, you can add it in into the arena. So let me drag it into the screen real quick so you guys can see it a little bit better. There you go. Right now, you can see the list of all the classes that appear in the Fire Emblem 8 Arena. Some you have seen before, others you haven't really seen before, simply because, well, reasons. Sometimes you do not like to go with a bow user in the arena, for an example. But right here you can find all of the characters, and all of the, or all of the classes really, that you can encounter in the arena. What you will notice immediately is this in the, or not immediately, but something you might notice is that the top row right here says melee weapon. When we toggle this, we can toggle it to magic weapon, and we can toggle it to ranged weapon. Ranged weapon is for characters, or for archers mostly. Magic weapon is classes that you will have to fight if you're a mage. And physical weapon or melee weapon is everything else. Now, what I want to tell you guys about is simply, if you click the data expansion button, you will unlock new slots to add characters in. I will not do that for the melee attack, but I kind of wanted to add the ranged weapon table right here. Huh, it appears that if you are an archer, you will never be able to fight a bow knight inside the arena if you're an archer yourself. So let's fix that real quick. I'm going to add in uh, two new slots right here. Boom. This is archer, but we're going to change this to simply ranger. And we're going to change this one to Ranger as well. What will happen is if we try to enter the arena with an Archer now, chances are that at some point we will encounter a Ranger instead of any of these other enemies. This also means that let's say I've added a new class to the, to the ROM. So for an example, just for your imagination, uh, let's add in a new class that never existed in the arena before. Let's say the class that we added is like, uh, let's say it's like a... This guy. This guy is our new custom class, the Dead Man. That is our new custom class, and we wanted to add that to the arena pool, so that a custom class, say you added a uh, Master Knight to Fire Emblem Builder, and you want it to appear in the arena, simply click Data Expansion, and add it into this list and there's a random chance that the game will say huh let's put this guy up against a character that is a master knight in the arena also do not really worry about promoted and unpromoted as the text says right here promoted and unpromoted foes are automatically adjusted meaning that you do not have to worry at all about setting pre-promoted or unpromoted or promoted, unpromoted, all kinds of promoted, super uber promoted classes in the arena, the ROM handles that itself. So you do not have to worry about paladins or cavaliers or stuff like that. So if this was a promoted class, it will only appear in battles where you would fight against promoted enemies and the other way around. 
Notice though that I've only added it to the melee weapon table. Let's say this class also uses magic and you want this class to also battle mages. Be sure to toggle to the magic weapon one and add, them, add this particular class here as well. And if you really wanted to show off your new class, go over here to the ranged weapon and add it in here as well. So, yeah, magic classes can be battled in the arena if you're an archer and it's all right here. While on the topic of the arena, there's another thing called the arena's weapons rank. This basically contains the list of all of the weapons that can be used inside the arena. Click on this and the following screen will appear. Boom. This little screen right here contains every single weapon, or this one right here I should say, every single weapon that can be used inside the arena. So, for all of the sword users, you will see nothing more than just a simple iron sword, steel sword, or silver sword, and an iron line, steel, blah 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 blah. What you will notice though is this little thing right here. This is the base amount of weapons, or this is the minimum of weapons that a class should use. You cannot really edit this, but let's say instead of an iron sword, you want characters to duel with a bronze weapon or a slim weapon instead. If you really wanted that, you could change it right here. Or if you want to make it really cool, let's say that instead of a steel weapon, you want gladiators to duel with killer weapons instead, which is really edgy. And I kinda like that idea a lot. So you could just change it up to, let's say, where's my boy the killing edge? There you go. You can change it up to killing edge. So now everyone will use a killing edge instead of a steel sword. So if you ever wanted to edit the weapons that characters use inside the arena, this is the little tool you need to look for. Let's say I've added in a new class, but the movement sounds of that class sound like the class is walking or even like the class is making horse sounds. You know, the sounds that a cavalier makes. Then of course you go to movement sounds. The movement sounds window looks like this. That's a little bit too small. Let me make it bigger for you guys. That's big enough, I hope. This little table right here contains all of the classes and the movement sounds these classes make. Or I think it does, in it, it does include almost every single class. It does miss the Lord classes. But what you need to know is that the standard sounds are just the uh, regular movement sounds, I guess. I don't know how the game really holds that. Just click this button anyway. And click yes when that notification pops up and boom now we have every single class let's say we added in this class right here like one of the previous examples it says no sounds that's because this class doesn't move but let's say I change this into a flying class like a wyvern rider or something then we have a lot of sounds to pick from but what you will notice is oh no the wyvern sound is not here oh no we do have mannequin wings though that comes close or the gargoyle wings don't worry guys simply go over to a standard uh, class that is already in there and huh wyvern rider uses default walking sounds that cannot be correct well I do not know how this really works but uh, I thought that in the prophecy of flames I said the um, gargoyle wings this one as the one for wyvern riders well it shouldn't be that important to immediately uh, think about oh shit did it reset everything I don't think it reset everything but if you notice that somehow the class makes different sounds than it's supposed to just go all the way to your custom class and set this well we want it to be a class that can fly set it to gargoyle wings and what will happen is the class will basically be able to move and will be able to fly and it will make flying noises so if you ever wondered why your armor knight sounds like he's walking on a horse or riding on a horse I should say then change this sound effect around to let's say the uh, armor knight dragon cyclops heavy sound and this one and you should be good and the sound will properly register to end this video, I want to teach you guys a couple of things that might be really handy once you start making your own Fire Emblem ROM hack. One of these things is the ultimate graphic repository repo that Clockinator runs in Fire Emblem Universe. You might have heard about Fire Emblem Universe. 
if you've been around on my channel for longer, I've done some stuff on Fire Emblem Universe. So if you found my channel via Fire Emblem Universe, you of course know that this exists. But if you didn't, this is a very nice place where you can get some really cool resources for your projects. Simply search it right here in the search bar, repo, and click this one right here. The one that says assets and graphics. But I already opened it and what you will get is this little window right here. This is the man Clockinator. He's a lovely fellow. A person that has done a lot of great work for the community and has kept up the repo very, very nicely to this point. Uh, he has added every single thing that's posted in here uh, very nicely. You can like the post if you really want to. I haven't made an account, so you cannot see what I liked. But in this repo, you can find a lot of... Up or on this thread, really. You can find a lot of updates that people placed about the repo. Let's say they've made, like, a new cool animation. They will most likely share it on this thread, and Clockinator or someone else will import... Or, like, battle screens, even. Some, a Clockinator or someone else will import those into the uh, repo. And a lot of different stuff happens here. This is a really cool tile set made by the creator of FE Builder, 7743. Shoutouts to him. But there's just a lot of other stuff that you can find here. Uh, when you go all the way to the top again, let's do that real quick. What you can see uh, is this little thing right here. You can click a link which will take you to the repo on GitHub. What you simply have to do is download GitHub, uh, open up GitHub, and you can basically download um, new updates very easily from the software of GitHub itself, and everything that was added since the re uh, last time you checked will easily be updated, and you can grab new resources. I should mention that if you use any of the resources inside the repo, every single thing inside the repo is labeled with the person's name, the, s the person who made uh, the asset. So let's say, uh, let's look for a cool little portrait. Well, let's say you find, you're like, oh shit, these weapon icons that Zalix made from Fire Emblem Awakening, which I really, really love because Awakening is my favorite FE. You simply say, oh shit, I really like what Z um, Zelix made. Uh, it should also be in the GitHub. But what you're like, what you see is like, oh, there's a special icon. And let's say I want to use the Armor Slayer weapon icon. What you do then is you say like, oh, it's labeled as Zelix. Be sure to credit Zelix for their work, ladies and gentlemen. Because, yeah, technically you could insert assets or use other people's assets without them knowing or without having to ask for permission. Everything in the repo is usually free to use and sometimes free to edit But note though that once you use the assets be sure to credit the people who made the assets because otherwise You're kind of like pirating other people's work and even though there's no law that prevents you from doing this It is kind of scummy to still be an absolute arse and just use stuff from others without giving credit to the people who made it. It's kind of, well, it just, it's just a very decent thing to do, to just, it's just common logic, common sense to credit someone from the for the work they have done. Like the repository, there's also this website going by the name of Emblem Anims. Now, Emblem Anims is kind of a little bit outdated, um, because this little website right here, it doesn't really, well, have a good, uh, you cannot really look at what has been added recently or what new things have been added, but you can easily find animations that you would like to insert into your ROM. The repo doesn't really have a user interface and Emblem Anims does have a user interface. So let's say um, I, I want to have a unique animation for a unique class and I want it to be a uh, custom lord animation. I click this and we get all kinds of animations. This, web uh, this website is mainly for animations by the way. Huh, it does not play the uh, image anymore. But that might just be because I'm using a different browser. It even has spell animations, look at that. You know that, right? And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff right here. Uh, oh, like this meme. Um, 
what you can do is simply say like, oh, I want Air Caliber in my ROM. So what you do is just simply click this, and what will happen, uh, I won't click it because it will automatically download the file. And the file will include the creator, which is listed down here, in the file name, so that you can easily, very easily remember who created the, raw, uh, the animation so that you can credit them. Because once again, crediting someone is a very decent thing to do. You should credit someone for their hard work. Uh, yeah, just do it. It's super simple. It can be done in a simple text file. You can do it in the ROM if you really want to really thank people. You could even just make a YouTube disclaimer video or something like that where you go past everyone and read their names out loud. Very simple. Put them in put them somewhere, just credit them. That's the only real thing um, that I'm asking of you all. And that is basically it, everyone. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I tried something new this video, and that is adding in some music that was in the very same repo I mentioned earlier. Um, as you can see, as you might have noticed in the bottom of the screen, I will have listed the title of the song, as well as the person who created it at the bottom, so that you may insert these midis yourself inside the ROM. It's because not a lot of midis are actually used, and not a lot of midis out there that are in the repo have actually been listened to. So I thought that I'd give some of these cool midis, even if they were not used in some kind of, like, project, a nice little shot inside this video. What I do want to mention, though, before finishing this video, is a link that will be in my description that you might not have noticed before, but it contains some really interesting tools and little things and just resources that I've made over the years. It's called XP's free to use and free to edit gold mine. And it contains a lot of resources from Fire Emblem The Prophecy of Flames, but it also contains some other stuff like maps I've made before and well, just click the link in the description and it will take you to Google Drive and you can find and figure out what cool stuff uh, is in that little repo right there, what it's in that little free to use asset place. I will make sure to update that uh, because, well, it's a little bit outdated, but, you know, I will just throw in some of the new portraits uh, so that you guys can easily uh, have some new resources to use. And just like the repo, make sure to kind of credit me once you decide to use uh, the resources there. So anyway, that is that. That's this little Fire Emblem tutorial gold mine video. This is probably uh, the first part of many videos to come. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. If you find this content enjoyable and if you want me to keep up this format with the music as well uh, and have this little, you know, this video with some little tidbits and tools in Fire Emblem Builder, if you want me to keep that up, be sure to hit the subscribe button uh, because that helps grow the channel. But most importantly, hit the like button so that I know that this is something I can keep doing going forward. And uh, leave a comment because um, I like to talk to people. Now, nah, I just wanted to say that leaving a comment is just, um, it helps with knowing what you guys would want from a future video. It just really helps with uh, finding out um, the content, what you guys want. Sometimes I'm just doing a shot in the dark, that is. But yeah, that is all there is to it. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial video. Goodbye.